Season 2, Episode 2 of the History Channel's unidentified series, The Triangle Mystery. Ten minutes in, it appeared to be a simple rehash of the 90s black triangle UFO stories. However, they do end up presenting one very interesting theory. But what they leave out of this episode is even more interesting. I'm Rather Be Squinting. Stay tuned as I fill in and connect the bizarre dots behind this episode. I'll be covering all the episodes of this season, as well as other stories surrounding the modern UFO disclosure movement. So please subscribe if you find this topic interesting. First, the stories of this episode. They start the show with two reported sightings of a black triangle in the Gulf War. The first sighting was an officer who says that he saw the black triangle at around 1 to 2,000 feet. It appeared to be floating slowly and silently. The other officer describes a similar report. He describes an object traveling at 300 to 500 miles per hour at a height of around 10,000 feet. After seeing this black craft with lights on each corner, he goes inside and tries to look at it on a radar. He is unable to locate the object. Next, the show takes us to Utah in 2013. Here, a former military analyst is out taking astronomy photos with his father. They see what appears to be a light streaking erratically across the sky and take a closer look with binoculars. Through the viewfinder, they see what appears to be a triangle-shaped object with lights on each corner. Next, they take us to Highland, Illinois on January 5th, 2000. We hear reports of a large black triangle-shaped object being tracked by several police departments in the area. It is described as floating silently, with some people reporting it at around 500 feet and others reporting around 10 to 20,000 feet. Finally, we have the stories of 1983 to 86 surrounding New York. During this time period, there were multiple reports of large black triangles in the sky. Reports were that the object was silent or making a low hum. People saw it hovering, moving slowly, and at least one report of it darting across the sky. After presenting these stories, the show gives us a couple explanations that might be behind these sightings. They talk about the possibility that a cargo plane or other large plane may be mistaken as a triangle-shaped craft. They give a clip that lends some credibility to this theory, but I believe that the lack of sound in any of these sightings really negates that possibility. They go on to give a uh, rather bizarre explanation that potentially all these sightings were due to Star Wars in the 70s being released and the triangle-shaped craft in that. Well, an interesting idea, I don't lend much credibility to that. The final hypothesis they present is that this might be a neutral buoyancy, semi-rigid airship. Bill Scott, an aviation expert, claims that during the 80s he saw such a craft. The show goes on to confirm the existence of these craft and shows us clips of what they look like. Now, these photos show the craft being blue, but they are clearly triangle shapes which almost identically mirror the reports that we've heard in this episode. These craft would be silent or maybe making a low hum. They could hover, move slowly, and turn. The show expounds on this hypothesis by talking about potential covert testing by the U.S. military of such craft. Bill Scott talks about how they did do such testing with stealth planes. He talks about flying the stealth planes over LA to gauge what the response would be in a real wartime situation. Interestingly enough, later on in the episode, the To The Stars Academy officials are having an internal conversation where they dismiss this idea, stating that the military would not do such tests. I believe Bill Scott is much more credible here and that it seems very plausible that the government would test such stealth crafts over United States cities. The To The Stars Academy officials are quick to dismiss the idea of these semi-rigid inflatables being the cause of the sightings due to the fact that some of the sightings claim that these craft had instantaneous acceleration. It seems to me that they throw the baby out with the bathwater here, as most of the reports in this episode do not claim any outrageous acceleration at all. In fact, most of the reports comment on how slowly and silently these crafts were moving. There's one glaring connection that the To The Stars Academy officials fail to make. The show provides evidence that the government was interested in these semi-rigid inflatable aircraft during the 80s, but what have they been doing since? Bigelow Aerospace, founded by Robert Bigelow, a figure who is entwined in all of these modern UFO disclosure stories, founded Bigelow Aerospace in 1998. This company's focus is on semi-rigid inflatable spacecraft. It has military contracts and has likely been doing active testing since 1998. Surely all the To The Stars Academy figures know of this connection. Why they do not explore this further and dive into what testing Bigelow Aerospace could have been doing during the 2000s escapes me. It seems quite clear to me that the events in 83 to 86 in New York were none other than the inflatables that Bill Scott mentions. The Gulf War sightings are, in my opinion, clearly inflatables as well. The semi-rigid craft would match the description as being silent. The speed and altitude discrepancy between the two Gulf War sightings are easily explained. Without any point of reference, it is impossible to tell the altitude of an object in the sky. An unknown object traveling at 30 miles per 
hour at 1,000 feet will appear the same as an object traveling at 300 miles per hour at 10,000 feet. Due to the nature of the inflatables and it being silent, I think that the low speed, low altitude explanation is quite likely. This leaves us with a Utah sighting. This sighting does not line up clearly with the inflatable explanation. There's one other potential explanation that this show touches on, the TR-3B. The show states that the TR-3B is a slow, large, rumored spy craft. The show goes on to have the military experts discredit the idea that this plane is real. However, this does not match the rumors that I've heard surrounding the TR-3B. I was first introduced to the TR-3B by Tom DeLonge on Joe Rogan's podcast. In one of Tom DeLonge's most outrageous claims of that episode, he claimed that the government was working on a anti-gravitary propelled craft known as the TR-3B. He went on to load up what he claimed was a video of the TR-3B in action. This seemed to be just a CGI video, but other claims that Tom made during that episode did appear to be true. Moreover, I'm very surprised and confused that they did not mention Tom's take on the TR-3B in this episode, Tom DeLonge being one of the founding members of To The Stars Academy. I find this especially suspect because it seems like Tom DeLonge's idea of what a TR-3B would potentially more accurately explain what was claimed in the Utah sighting. All in all, I did find this to be an interesting episode. The idea of semi-rigid inflatables being a cause of UFO sightings is an idea that I had not previously considered and I find highly credible. I am very skeptical that they did not mention the link between Bigelow and these semi-rigid inflatables, as well as the absence of Tom DeLonge's claims about the TR-3B. Hopefully these topics are explored in future episodes. I'll be watching and keeping tabs, and you can come back here for my take. Thanks. I'm Rather Be Swidden.